finally, Falcon 2.0. Welcome to Smoke World Headquarters. <laughs> we haven't been able to get this thing out into the world just yet and do such a thing, but we've been promising you folks that we were going to do it, so there was no putting it off. We're just going to do it here in the backyard. This is the long-awaited camper tour of the Aluminum Falcon 2.0 in all its majestic glory. This is a 2020 Lockwood Mini Light 2507S. It is 5,400 pounds and change dry, uh, and I'm, I'm going to put all the exact numbers down here because I'm going from memory, folks, and we haven't had this thing long, so I haven't memorized everything. It's got a cargo carrying capacity of 1,400-ish pounds, um, and I guess like we did with Falcon 1.0, why don't we start in the back and work our way around, so let's, let's head that way. A few things different from Falcon 1.0. Uh, on, the, on the rear side, we have our exterior shower, uh, the keys for which I have in here. Hot cold water, separate spigots, separate faucet, excuse me. We've used this a lot on Falcon 1.0 for washing dishes outside, save room in our gray tank. I would presume we will continue that kind of practice with this one. Again, this has not been cranked up yet because we haven't had a chance to. Voila. Black tank flush. So there's that. Spare tire, rear mounted. Oh, and this. This is a bracket on which would mount the suburban propane griddle that Rockwood so generously gives you with the purchase of any mini light camper. LED brake lights, marker lights. Uh, as with all mini lights, this is backup camera prepped. We actually had the backup camera, as you folks have seen in our previous installation video uh, for Falcon 1.0. So that's what a backup camera will look like when it's in place. You see gutters on each corner to help water drainage. Here is your city water connection. This is any pressurized water supply comes in here. This is your antifreeze inlet. If you happen to live in a part of the country that requires winterizing, cable satellite intake right here. 30 amp power. Suburban six gallon water heater. This is a direct spark ignition, it's gas and propane. Uh, I think the recovery rate on this one is the same as on Falcon 1.0. I believe it's 7.4 gallons an hour. Uh, if it's different, I'll put it down here, but if I didn't, that means it's that I got it right. <laughs> well, there's that. This is your slide. Um, we're going to show you this uh, extended after Jesse shows you the inside, because we wanted to show you the inside with it withdrawn, so you can see what kind of space was in there with the slide closed. So we'll come back out later, and I'll show you, to show you the outside while it's open. Um, we've got our sewer and gray water drain here. I like that this one's a little bit higher off the ground than on Falcon 1.0. I think it's maybe about three three inches more clearance, and that doesn't sound like much, but believe me, folks, I can look at it and tell you that's higher off the ground. Grand black tank capacity is 30 gallons each on this coach, a little bit more than we had available in Falcon 1.0. 14-inch Castle Rock tires. Uh, I do not have the model number on these tires. They're the stock tires, folks. Um, if I can find the number, I'll put it down here, but it's whatever comes with it, that's what these are. Another thing Forest River is so generous with, they actually also, in addition to the propane griddle, they give you a tire pressure monitoring system. We do not have it installed yet, but it would mount you know, on the valve stems. And when we show you the slide extended, I'll point out the slide topper that actually came with this model as well. Um, this was something that we didn't think we were gonna get. This was another surprise. We thought we'd have to find that aftermarket and arrange to have it installed ourselves, but whether it was Rockwood installed it standard or whether the folks in Cape World added it. But nonetheless, we have it and we're grateful for it. That's going to be a big help in keeping the top of the slide clean whenever we're at a campground. Um, 
this the slide is the dinette you'll see when we get inside because the dinette is right here there's actually access to beneath the dinette storage and not to get too terribly off track i love these magnetic catches that is just so nice if you take a peek in here you'll see that beneath the dinette in addition to beneath the bed all aluminum framing and it's welded this is not wood nailed together like you see in some models rockwood's very good about aluminum framing all around these do not have slam latches i wish they had that but i guess beggars can't be choosers these are st still cam locks um, and beside the dinette inside you'll see when we get in there there's a pantry closet uh, this is the rear of that area and as again rockwood making use of every inch of space they can has made a storage compartment out of the rear of that section we lamented the lack of pass-through storage in falcon 1.0 and because this unit is also a murphy bed there's not really pass-through storage in it but there is kind of sorta <laughs> this, this is what passes for pass-through no pun intended this is beneath the sofa, and it does go all the way through to the other side. There's an access on the other side. You can also access this from this side. You lift the sofa, and you'll be able to get down into this area here. Uh, we have to kind of be careful what we store in here, though, because this is actually the interior of the cabin. We don't want to put anything like sewer hoses in here because it's in the living space. So here's your water tank fill. If you're going boondocking, you take your own water supply. You'll fill them up there, gravity fill. 78-gallon fresh water capacity in this coach. I can't imagine ever needing that much fresh water on our trips, but hey, it's there if we need it. Tongue weight, hitch weight on this unit, 625 pounds. Uh, I'm pretty sure that's the exact number. I'll put it right here to be sure. Uh, seven pin umbilical, typical, uh, motorized tongue jack. Uh, 30 pound propane bottles on this coach. You may recall Falcon 1.0 had 20 pound bottles. These are 30s. Automatic switch over. What else we got? We got two batteries on this coach. Falcon 1.0 only had one. This carries two. Let's see if we can get this compartment open and show you that space. Oh yeah. Same on the other side. This is this is our sewer stuff. Um, this is actually beneath the wardrobes inside. That's where they fit these in. And this is this is the mirror access to the quote unquote basement that I showed you earlier. And like most all coaches you find these days, this one is solar ready. Uh, this unit does not come with a charge controller. You have to come up with that on your own in addition to the panels, but that's where you connect them right there. Uh, more LED lights. Oh, I forgot to mention, come back right here for a second. This nose cap. Uh, we really like on Falcon 1.0, we've got it here again, this automotive glass, this is this is a true windshield, this is not just a window, this is like automotive grade wind, windshield, uh, as you can see, almost impossible to see in, uh, but when the bed's down, you've got you know, the sky view that you can look up and see, and we've always enjoyed that, I'm glad we've got that again. Uh, diamond plating here to prevent from damage from rocks sticking up off your tow vehicle. All right, back on here. Something else we have loved about this coach, these. These are your Mori gravity steps. A huge improvement over the fold down steps we had on Falcon 1.0. Um, almost no weight to them. They're. Oh. Easily they come up. Now we learned the hard way to don't take your hands off of them while you're raising them. <laughs> As, I, as my camera lady can attest to, if you let these things sling up too, too fast, these brackets might slip inside and actually lock themselves in place, then you can't get them down. As with the previous coach, screen door separates. As with the previous coach, we have our RV lock keyless entry. Another thing folks at Camping World on Murder Beach were kind enough to swap out for us. We didn't have to do that ourselves. Furnace vents, refrigerator uh, vents, and exterior television connection, there's your bracket there. 
saving the best for last. The piece de resistance of the exterior of this camper. Dun da da da. Behold. The exterior kitchen. This was something we weren't even really looking for, but we liked everything else so much about the coach that this was just a bonus. Five cubic foot refrigerator. This is more cold storage. However, the downside is this does not run off of 12 volt. This only runs off shore power, so you can't really have anything in here during transit. This is a real sink with a real drain. It doesn't just collect in a pan that you have to dump elsewhere. Um, it actually goes to your gray tank. We have pantry-ish storage here. Dedicated light. Dedicated power supply out here if you're going to be mixing your margaritas in a mixer out here. Propane cooktop, two burner. Set up. Oh, and lest I forget, if you choose to have the griddle or some other uh, propane using device going, you've got an LP supply down here that you can feed that. You may recall Falk 1.0 had one exterior speaker. This unit actually has two stereo. <laughs> one and two. Um, these run off Bluetooth from the audio package inside, which we'll show you. Uh, this light, same as Falcon 1.0, kind of an orange yellow light that we're told does not attract bugs as readily as white light does. Uh, I still, after all this time, refuse to believe that. 17 foot power awning. This is four feet longer than the awning on Falcon 1.0. And if you can see, in the, we can't we can't extend the awning because we're too close to the tree line here in the property. So you have to take our word for it. But once you extend the awning, it's a lot more visible. There is an LED strip right here at the base that runs the length of the awning that puts off white light. And we can attest it is very bright and very useful once the sun goes down. All right. So on that note, let's uh, go up top and we'll show you some things on the roof, and then Miss Jessie will show you the inside. Here we are up on the roof, a fully walkable roof. Uh, all 25 feet, 11 inches of it. I don't think I mentioned that earlier. The length, this co exterior length, is 25 feet, 11 inches. Uh, we'll start right here with this Max Air uh, bathroom exhaust fan. This is the cover, of course. It's angled in such a way that moisture won't come in when it's raining. Uh, powered fan pulls moisture and odor out of the bathroom all through here. That's your skylight that goes into the shower, which we'll see shortly. This Dometic air conditioner is a 15,000 BTU air conditioner. Uh, once again, we thought we were getting the standard 13,500 BTU air conditioner that comes with this coach, but we have a 15,000 BTU air conditioner. HD TV aerial antenna. This is the exhaust fan for the refrigerator. These are can't remember the term. Uh, if I find it later, I'll stick it down here. But the purpose of these contraptions are to help draw odors out of the black tank so they're not seeping up into the coach. So this is kind of like bad air vent, for lack of a better phrase. <laughs> AM FM radio antenna. And this little contraption, this is the Wi-Fi Ranger. Uh, this is, in essence, a router for the camper. Uh, this contraption just like a router in your house. It will sync up to an internet connection and then provide that signal to other devices inside the camper. We love this. I love this contraption here. I think Jesse does too. <laughs> and up here is access to or access from. This is a vent that comes from right over the bed inside the coach. Uh, this is not a fan. It is just a vent. And something that we've always appreciated about Rockwood and they have a great reputation uh, fantastic sealant everywhere, the nose cap. And you'll see, of course, all the all the devices, all the installed components, heavy sealant all around them. So I believe that covers the outside. Let's crawl down here and not break our necks, and then we'll take you inside and show you the living area. With the slide closed, it is still travel friendly. As you look from our bedroom area, you can clearly see a path through the kitchen 
which takes you to the refrigerator and just past the refrigerator is our bathroom. Definitely travel friendly. Would not have to put the slide out except for the bed. But with this huge dinette that becomes another sleeping area, we could still manage. As you come in, there is a large cabinet just inside the door. Huge storage compartment. Double space. Probably going to use this as a shoe caddy once we get everything sorted and situated conveniently right by the door. The only downfall of that is all of our controls are this far in from the door, which we were used to being able to just kind of reach in to put the awning out or turn the lights on. So, yeah, it, it just takes some getting used to. But this is our control panel with all of our, you know, water pump, water heater, etc., slides, yeah, the typical stuff. We have several 110 household outlets and cabinet mounted heating, which we prefer instead of the floor mounting. So if you want to come with me into the kitchen, uh, plenty of counter space, or at least a lot more than we used to have. And we have this fabulous leaf that we can lift up for additional counter space or workspace. And a double sink. I love it. But double sink with the, you know, you can use this as a cutting board if you flip it over. Uh, this nice countertop, seamless, so we're not going to worry about getting any water damage in, you know, seams of the cabinet. Below the sink, we have one of the little utility drawers that drops down. And three drawers, or two drawers, excuse me, I said three. Two drawers in order to store all of our goodies. Previously, we only had one drawer, so that's a nice change. Typical um, three burner gas stove with the propane gas, and the cover becomes your backsplash. And once again, we have an oven. So I'm looking forward to it. I finally got the oven working. <laughs> so uh, we do have our microwave, which again, we really like having that, especially if you've seen my coffee making. 32-inch uh, um, flat screen TV with a sound bar. This actually works this time. We had them check that before we left Camping World to make sure everything worked. Our refrigerator with this nice pretty covering on the front of it is an 8 cubic foot Dometic uh, automatic switch between propane and electric very spacious i am happy about having a little more room in this refrigerator for longer trips our um week-long trips that we have taken at christmas and during spring break we really needed a little more room so now we have 13 cubic feet of uh cold storage with the outside refrigerator on electric you know shore power uh, it's nice sizable freezer too so we can throw a bag of ice in there if we want to. We don't even have to take ice makers. <laughs> ice cube trays, excuse me. On the opposite side of the refrigerator is a nice huge pantry. And it actually has this emotion light inside. Plenty of storage. I'm almost scared I'm gonna overload it. Let's check out the bathroom. As you enter the bathroom, huge cabinet on this side with another motion light. Uh, it is enormous. I can store all kinds of linens and towels and if I needed to, even additional clothing or um, we have our hamper in here. So lots of lots and lots of space. And that's not all. Rockwood does not waste an ounce of space when they are putting together a camper and that's one of the reasons we really love them uh, and of course their cabinets are not stapled, they're pocket screwed, everything is nice hardware, sturdy wood, it's, it's put together great. A uh, nice little bonus storage shelf here beside the Dometic 
plastic flush toilet. Uh, but it's a nice little area. I have my hair dryer and stuff in there. And good size medicine cabinet as well, which we have crammed full. <laughs> Still your typical sink. It's not, you know, real deep, but it'll do. Um, another one of the little drop down utility type drawers. Uh, this cabinet has is not quite as deep as the one we had in the previous camper, but it still holds the couple of, you know, cleaning supplies and potty pods and things like that that we keep in there. The shower is fabulous. Uh, it has the sliding doors that squeegee, I guess is the best way, the magnetic doors, but they squeegee when you finish the shower, it all drains down. So really like having that option instead of the shower curtain. Has a nice little storage mesh hanging compartment and has the uh, shower miser which if we were boondocking, it recycles the water while it's heating so that you're not filling up your tanks. Another cabinet on the other side of the shower. I'm turning that light on so you can see. So still tons of storage and yet another, uh, you know, utility type cabinet here to the, if something needs worked on, they can get to it more easily. I think that's the water heater back there. I believe so, too. Above the toilet is our Max Air vent. And it's covered by the cover that Smokey mentioned on the roof. So even if it's raining, we can still have that vent open and get some air circulation in here or get the stink out. <laughs> In the slide, there are storage above the dinette. Uh, it's not quite as deep as our previous camper was above the dinette, but we have so much elsewhere that this is fine. Uh, I actually have more space right now than I know what to do with. <laughs> really like this U-shaped dinette. Plenty of space for all of our gear that we tend to not have anywhere to put. Um, we can set it there or if we have company over, we can have space inside if the weather is not permitting to be outside. Love the table. It lowers to you know make the bed, but it can also make a coffee table in front of the sofa. Or if we wanted to, we could take it outside and set it in front of the camp chairs. Uh, there, this is our emergency exit window. Um, and again, the nice you know one hand sliding blinds, which are very nice. Under the dinette, we do have two storage drawers. Um, not quite, you know, the baby drawer of the previous camper, if you didn't hear that story. Uh, our previous camper, the dealer told us that a lady said it was big enough to put a baby in. <laughs> Beside the dinette, huge wardrobe with removable shelves. You can customize it the way you want or for the type of clothing that you're taking, there is a hanging bar at the top. So you can remove these and hang clothes if you want. So each of these shelves is removable. And of course the other side of this cabinet was the outside storage that you saw previously. And this is our living area. You know, Murphy bed again. We have the couch that ha this time has these nice little uh, swinging trays that you can have and you know if you're working on a laptop or you just you want know, to have you know something a little closer to you than the side table uh they do swing out of the way so it you know even when you put the bed down they are you know out of the way uh they can be removed so if you don't want them here um uh, we have we can actually put these away in a cabinet somewhere nice bonus for this sofa is it it has a footrest. It's not really a recliner because the back doesn't recline back. Again, we have wardrobes on each side of the bed. Um, mine is slap full right now <laughs> and a mess, but it it's very long. So if you have lots of hanging items that you want to carry with you, 
you know, you have, they don't hit the bottom of the wardrobe like our previous uh, wardrobes did. And this one has a drawer also. So it's a nice, keeping things nice and tidy and putting things away to carry things around. There is a privacy curtain when the bed is down you, or if you're just getting dressed. You can close the privacy curtain if you happen to have guests that are using the dinette as a bed. So let's take a look at the bed. Again, you just unhook these latches, which you have only done a couple of times, so they haven't loosened up. They're pretty tight right now. Okay. Lower the sofa by pulling this little handle. All right, so lower the couch, the sofa, and then just pull. And this is very easy and lightweight. And voila, there's the bed. You unhook the little straps and crawl into bed and you're good to go. The best thing about this camper, a lot of people say they don't want a Murphy bed because they have to keep putting it up during the day, which was my beef before. That was one of the things. I wanted a separate bedroom. This one, we actually can have the bed down all day if we want to. We can easily get in and out of the door. We can use the dinette. We can watch TV from the dinette, or we can swivel it to the couch. But we have options that we didn't have before, which I love. And to put the bed up, you just pull this little knob. And you lift the little bit back into place. And you fall over. All right. Then you can latch to bed and pull the couch back into a spot. Nice thing about this one are these two lights above the bed are actually on a, a switch. So we can turn those off. Um, which would be nice at bedtime if we didn't want to crawl out of bed to turn off all the lights from the control panel. We have that one. And this is actually a charging center too. So there is 12 volt and a couple of USB ports for charging. So that's nice beside the bed. And that's our inside. When we did the review of Falcon 1.0, we mentioned that that model was an excellent choice for our mm -hmm. first RV. And if that happened to be our last RV, then we would have been we would, okay with that. Right. Well, let me assure you folks, this is the last <laughs> RV. <laughs> this, this is it. Unless we win the lottery uh, yeah, okay. or retire. <laughs> um, and, and I cannot foresee us needing anything larger than this no. unless our lifestyle drastically changes. I mean, we're, we're weekend warriors with the occasional long weekend week here and there. I can't imagine us ever needing anything no. bigger than this 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 is, this is perfect for this us. is more than i really thought we would get when we upgraded and we didn't think we'd upgrade for a couple of years right <laughs> surprise um <laughs> that being said uh falcon 1.0 there was no way in our opinion you know this is a couple's coach yeah. uh falcon 1.0 also a couple's coach uh we didn't really see any way that anybody any, anything other than a couple mm. could spend time in it and enjoy it we can see how a family of three, maybe even a family of four, if the children are small, could weekend warrior long weekend in oh, this and, and be quite comfortable and enjoy themselves. I still don't think that a family of four could full time in this and really be comfortable. But, you know, hey, to each his own. That's right. maybe, maybe I'm overestimating. Uh, this is the 2507. Uh, Rockwood also makes a mini light 2509, Nine, I, I believe think. it is. That's a bunkhouse version. So apparently Rockwood thinks that somebody can spend more time in it than that. Uh, so, on that note, uh, you now know by, about as much of it as we do because we haven't even really taken out of this yard yet. <laughs> so, in the days and weeks and months to come, you will learn just as much about it as we will. Uh, so, in that respect, uh, keep coming back and you will, along with us, keep, keep living, living and learning. learning.